Welcome back to the, I forgot to check the microphones were turned on when I was filming the intro factory. Last week, we got Kevo painted in the engine bay and the underside of the car and also inside the car. So the engine bay came out Sherbrooke green. It's not perfect, but it does present well. There's a couple of runs here and there, but nothing that I am worried about. The underside of the car and the inside of the car was painted with Car Builders TXT coating and it's fully hidden all the sins. The whole car is sealed up and we're ready to refit everything back in the car. I've already refitted the diff and all the control arms in the car. I've also refitted the brake lines and secured those brake lines just using some Raceworks stainless steel P clips. I still need to make up a brake line, hard line on the diff because I forgot while it was out, but we'll get to that at a later date. So right now we're ready to refit everything back into the car. Pretty well everything was originally just dummy fitted so nothing was actually 100% bolted on for good the exhaust manifold the inlet manifold everything was kind of held on with just one bolt there's tape over all the ports on the engine nothing is on there for good so I need to double check the work and make sure everything is on there for good before we can bolt the engine back in there's also a heap of stuff to refurbish the brake calipers have been sitting around for a very long time they are they're not C's, but they definitely need a rebuild. The control arms are rusty. The hubs are all rusty. I'm going to replace the front wheel bearings too. So everything needs to get either refurbished or replaced. There's still a whole heap of wiring to get done on the car. The engine bay wiring was completed by Whitey's. They have done everything back to the ECU for the engine management side of things. The Haltech Nexus R5 is a PDM and it controls everything throughout the car. So headlights, tail lights, wipers, horn, fuel pumps, wheel speed sensors, everything goes back to the R5 and none of that wiring is done yet. So my mate Miller from Miller's Auto Electrics is coming around to give me a hand on that. I don't think we'll get a start on that in this episode. I'd like to, but Miller's a busy man and the car still needs to get pieced back together which I want to get done first so we can get it off the hoist and open all doors so it's not awkward wiring the car. So lots of jobs to get done and we just need to hook in and make it happen and refurbish and replace everything on Kevo, even though it's still a dirty old VR Commodore. <laughs> The front calipers on Kevo have already been upgraded with VT items. They just need a quick clean up to be painted. The rears, one of the slide pins was actually seized. So with a bit of heat and persuasion, we got it out. I'm then removing the wheel bearings from the front hubs because I damaged the ABS sensor and I would like to run a front wheel speed sensor on the car. So I'm just replacing both sides. The bushes in the car weren't too bad, but again, replacing them just because everything is apart. We have some polyurethane replacements to go in place of the standard rubber items. been soaking all the parts we can in this metal rescue rust remover. It is a godsend. Really easy to use. Literally just fill a bucket up, away you go. This is 10 litres I'm using. It is safe on your skin and safe on rubber and everything else. So here's the rear caliper brackets which have been sitting in there for about two hours now and they've come out really nice. So that's good. These ones, I'm gonna put them back in there like that and add few more things to a collection here we give you a before and after so this before you can see all the spidery rust see how it comes out while i'm waiting for the metal rescue to do its job i've popped into my local super cheap auto to grab myself some rattle cans to paint up these brake calipers and suspension arms i'm using the mtm range which i've been very impressed with as you can see, the Metal Rescue has worked and it's removed all of the surface rust off these strut tops. Now it's just as simple as bombing all the bare metal parts with some primer and covering them in some metallic black paint. 
Some of these parts will never be seen under the car, but at least I know they're covered in paint, which will save them from corroding in the future. Spec. Talk. Spec. <laughs> We've got the cross member bolted back in. I had this powder coated in texture black. I don't even know why. I think it was mainly to save myself a bit of time. And it pretty well looks the same as the TXT coating, so it kind of matches. I've got the caster arms also powder coated texture. The control arms and the hubs and everything else have been painted with some MTN rattle can. So that's what I was doing before. They've got bushes now in there, they're bolted on. I just want to grease, just going to put a pin through the boot and grease these uh, ball joints up. But that's sorted. Waiting on some new outer hubs and we've also got the strut tops to paint so before they can uh, be bolted in. I was sick of putting overspray everywhere. I just thought I could get away with it, but I hated it. And now we've got the old Ridge Rider booth set up with the Tool Pro uh, backing board. I don't know what you'd call that, but... Just don't want to have any overspray, I'm sick of it. These pipes are going to get painted in Panther Mica. So, Engine Bay is Sherbrooke Green, a classic Holden colour, and Panther Mica is also another classic Holden colour. So, that's what we're painting these in. The bonnet hinges are going to do back in the Sherbrooke, as well as the strut tops, which aren't here. They still haven't been hung up yet. So, these bad boys are going to get painted in the same colour as the Engine Bay. So, these sit up in the fill the hole in there and then our shock works bolt in through here so painting away and getting it done tonight thank you Geordie Lurgeon easy and then tomorrow we'll start assembling bolting everything back onto the engine and I don't know whether to put the auto on the back of the JZ before slinging it in or put the auto in after we'll just see how we go right on are we ready for some with the auto on the well, just risk. Are you just risky, like scratching the yeah. um, radiator support, basically? Doing it or something? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we'll figure that out as the time comes. Sweet. Ready for paint? Yeah. Sorted. Sick. It's ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm doing it wrong. But someone commented and said that to use a piece of tape, so <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Great source of education, the comment section. I don't know if it's working any better or not. I suppose it is. Yeah, just rip it off and chuck it in the bin. It's still going down the side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it wrong, I know I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. The Ridge Rider paint booth was a success. I kept all the mess on the inside. It worked a treat. And the paint turned out, well, not as clean as I thought. I had some troubles with the gun. There's actually quite a bit of orange peel on the clear. Truth be told, I actually don't give a crap. Uh, the color, I'm gonna have to take it out in the sun to give you a look at it. It is really, really nice. And turned out really good. So I also did a couple of pops for my mate Brad. But all in all, I'm stoked. The bonnet hinges painted the Sherbrooke, so sweet. I'll take this out in the sun and give you a look at it. It's awesome, buddy, beautiful color. So it's not quite black. It's got this like greeny pearl through it and it looks schmicko. I'm very stoked with that. It looks really good. Apart from this one ding right on top there, but oh well, that's what happens, unfortunately, when you rush things. Sweet, I'm stoked. I can't wait to bolt this on. Really looks really good.
the best part about taking the time to paint everything is how rewarding it is when you bolt everything together and how fresh it looks. Everything is either brand new or refurbished. Calipers have been overhauled. We've got new pads, brand new rotors. The hubs, they came out schmicko after we soaked them in that rust remover. They've now been painted in metallic black. We've got new bushes in the control arms, cast arms, everything's bolted on. The rack got a little coat of paint too. And now I'm ready to bolt in some more fresh parts. These guys need no introduction. Shockworks are, in my opinion, the leaders when it comes to suspension setups in drift cars, circuit cars, and also drag cars. Pretty well, it's a case by case nature. I contacted Chris, I gave him the rundown of the car, and he basically has set these up for the kind of racing that I'll be doing. This is a street car, but also predominantly kind of radial racing is what I'll be competing in. So this is what we've sent up. These are basically just out of the box. We've just set the, I suppose you'd call it a base height. Uh, everything will get changed, most likely get changed once we get the car on the road and at the track. Uh, Shockworks do also offer track support to come and help you set your car up to make you go faster. So we're going to bolt these suckers in. These are a direct replacement for your VR. They've just got like a little top hat, so that pretty well gets in like that. Scratch all the fresh paint, like so and we'll bolt them in. And then, now we've got some suspension and everything back in the car, I will be lowering it back down to get the engine in. We'll start working on the engine and get everything bolted back onto that and slot it back into the car. We can't do the rear suspension just yet. Well, well rear brakes. I'm waiting on, not waiting on, I need to steal a handbrake assembly out of that paddock VS. So that will be whenever I can get there, I need Basically, I need heaps of stuff out of that car, so I'll do that all in one day. So we'll just get the front sorted first, engine in, worry about the rear at a later date. Back in the bay with no casualties. Looking good, Kevo. Looking good. Before we fit the gearbox, I've given the crank a solid cleanup and fitted up the adapter plate for the power glide. Next up comes the flex plate, which is a fancy SFI approved billet thing. Once the bolts are torqued to spec, we can slot in the power glide and fit up the gearbox cross member. Here's the current situation. Some top bloke decided to put all the bolts into one container. These are all from Kevo. I know that that one's a steering column. I know that some of these little small Allen key ones are for the brake lines. I think these might be bell housing, but also these ones are also Imperial, as is that one. And the only thing Imperial really would be the bell housing, but we've already got bolts in there, so. Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. What was that? <laughs> Prior what? The five P's. Oh, no. You never heard of that? When is this some Prior preparation thing? prevents piss poor performance. Okay, then. And you are presenting piss poor. This is my preparation. Ready? <laughs> this? <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> As I mentioned at the start of the episode, everything in the car was just previously dummy fitted. So now we're bolting everything up for good. One item that was never fitted was the converter. So this gearbox is a power glide. It's built by Gilroy's in Toowoomba. I think Gilroy spends most of his time redoing eight speeds these days, but 
Once upon a time, he did do glides. He's also, I would call him an AT40 specialist. Very knowledgeable bloke. That was a hookup through Christian. The converter we're using is a Circle D converter. These guys are well known for a top quality product. This is a bolt together converter and we do have a spare stator to swap in if this doesn't suit our application. When this was dummy fitted, we never fitted the converter. So we never actually got a set a converter setback height. This currently as it sits is about five and a half mil. So that converter is seated right up in the pump. It's not going anywhere. Five and a half mil is probably too much because it's going to pull it back out off the drive. So what we're going to do is space it out. Circle D do supply washers. So what I'm going to do is actually space it out with two washers. And then those two washers then gives us three mil setback off the converter. So that is bang on. Uh, then once that's done, the converter is sweet. We've got to make up some transmission lines. Being as I got creative with the exhaust over this side, I'm actually going to run the converter lines over the bell housing and over this side at the passenger side. Uh, from there, I've also got a dump valve to fit. That's some custom AN lines. And what else was back here? The trans brake solenoid uh, needs to get wired up. So much stuff needs to get wired up still, but that's a future job for Millers. So I'm gonna bolt this converter in. Then I believe tail shaft can go in for good and we'll start on, I've got some stuff for the rear brakes. So I think we'll get those on the car so we can get the car rolling again. I went and visited the Paddock VS parts car and stole heaps of crap off it. I got heaps of interior parts out of it, which I have now clean. I basically gave them a soak in some Bars Bugs interior cleaner, which is probably not the right way to use that product, but I just smashed it on, gave everything a gurney and let it dry out in the sun and with the fans. That came up pretty good actually, so that's a later job to get interior put in the car. While I was in the paddock, I also stole the handbrake assembly off that VS. So this is using, it's a nine inch, four nine inch, but it's the big bearing outers. For some reason, we wanted to use VRVS rear brake calipers. And now I'm only finding out that the handbrake isn't working. So first thing is the pins that hold these um, brake shoes on drum shoes on there's actually nowhere for them to sit in the through the flange so i've got to now remove everything off and drill them out the other thing is because it is a big bearing uh diff center or diff housing sorry this the way this works is they actually don't they don't clear the nuts for the retainer so it's really close but i'm gonna have to remove I don't really want to because these are obviously built like this for strength, but I'm just going to get the die grinder out and remove some material from the inner there to hopefully get these a bit closer. More stuffing around, but hopefully it should work. I suppose that's why you kind of use an off-the-shelf kit that works and you don't have to stuff around doing this. I don't know why we went, why Al chose VRVS brakes, maybe because we had them, but yeah, anyway, we'll make it work and continue stuffing around on Kevo. Thanks, mate. Love your work. It's a swan.
clearance on the shoes and everything's belted up looking good. Having the car back on the ground is a bit of an accomplishment. There's still brake lines and stuff to get made, but the handbrake works. I also need to fit a handbrake lever and some cables to that. Being that we've cut out the tunnel, there's no handbrake assembly there anymore. So I'm just gonna buy like a hot rod kit and maybe put it on the side of the driver. I've started to fit up some interior parts because one, there's junk all over the floor in the shed and two, it's a job that I can it makes me feel like I've accomplished a, a big task. I fitted up the carpet and I fitted in the driver's seat. It's a Raceworks, I think you call it a halo seat because it wraps around your head. And this is the passenger seat. These have been sitting up on the pallet racking for like a year now. It's a felt, they're super comfy. They are a fiberglass seat. So pretty well, this is going to get bolted in on those Raceworks brackets. And then gonna try and fit up the rest of the dash and everything, door cards try and get as much interior back in the car as possible. For the sake of, let's call it 30 kilos of stuff, I'm not too worried about weight in the car. I would rather it be comfortable and kind of help with noise and heat via the floor and everything too. So comfortable street car so that I can drive it anywhere and it feels like a street car, not a race car. Where's the in-between race car and street car? What do you call it? What's that word? So satisfying, look at that. I know it's overkill, but I will say having carpet throughout the car does make a huge difference. Another big difference for the car is having windows that actually work. I purchased some doors off Marketplace and the plan was originally just to fit these doors, but Marketplace strikes again and they aren't in good shape. So I've done a bit of a hack job and just cut the window regulators out of the Marketplace doors and fitted them into Kevo's original doors. I gave the glass a clean up with some bars bugs and would you look at that, the windows now roll up and down, which is all I was after. Does the throttle body blade go this way to give a clean opening for the ports? But then is it restricting the back ports or does it go this way? And which way will make more power? I'm no, gonna test no that. one has ever tested that before. <laughs> I'm going to test that on the dyno. I'm going to do it like this because the motor faces the bottom and it is out of the way. Scratchy, scratchy. Don't scratch. Oh, more hands in there. More hands. Oh. 
We have made monumental progress on Kevo and everything is coming together very nicely. The engine bay is not complete. Everything probably has to come back off. The surge tank is just sitting there. The intake's just sitting there. The cold side pipe, I'm most likely going to remove again for the first start, just to make sure there's no secret boost drags installed anywhere. But really, it is looking sweet. The piping color, it does look pretty nice and I'm stoked with the outcome. I've also done so many little jobs here and there that I haven't filmed along the way. The stage of this build we're at now, everything just takes a serious amount of time. I suppose I'm quite pedantic too, so I want everything cleaned and painted and looking nice. So that's why things take time and I've also been a very busy man. We've been to Jamboree, we've been to Sydney for World Time Attack. I've got other projects lined up and I'm trying to spend as much time with my family as possible to keep my head in check. So lots of progress has been made on done on Kevo. We're nowhere near first starting. There's still heaps of work to get done. Uh, just today before filming this outro, I tidied up the dump valve on the back of the power glide, had to make up some new lines. So that was done out of Raceworks dash eight 200 series. I then made the auto trans cooler lines up to the PWR cooler at the front here. That's being made out of dash six. There is no wiring fitted. There's still heaps of plumbing to get done, but we have made heaps of progress. And I want to say thanks to all of my mates that have come around to lend me a hand. It really does help me out having awesome friends that come, come around and work on a pretty cool car. I've got bonnet pins to fit, but I'm hoping that I can actually fit the standard bonnet catch stuff back in. The intercooler's right there and the way the combo works, it's got a big pin that slots in here. So I don't know if the standard bonnet latch is going to work, but we will figure this out as we go. That's what happens with performance cars. You kind of take, sometimes you take two steps forward and then four steps backwards and then six step forwards after that. And then another four steps back. And that's why I made this hat, I hate cars, because Cars can sometimes be a pain in the butt. If you want to take the piss, actually, I don't think we've got any of these in stock. We've got more coming that will be in stock shortly. So if they come this week, check the merch store. Or if you want to buy a long sleeve or another Skid Factory shirt, help yourself. It also helps the show for me to continue doing cool stuff like this. Thank you for watching another episode of Kevo. We're up to episode 11 and we're probably not stopping we've got heaps more work to get done too so stay tuned I'm hoping to try and get this started within the next episode but there still is lots of work to get done so we'll see how we go wiring is the next big thing to happen which is going to happen hopefully next week for me in real time so we'll get that done get this buttoned up and on the road thanks for watching enjoy the moment and drive safe i'll see you next time cheers if you weren't aware, the Skid Factory has a Patreon, which gets you some perks like early video releases or personal shout outs in the outro. So thanks to Vaughn Ovens, The Bro Carlos, Damien Foster, Dennis Glavis, and Bunyan Mick Feverish. Apologies if I've pronounced your names wrong. Thank you for supporting the Skid Factory. What's for dinner? I'm going to Kiwana Pub for a pub feed. Thanks dudes, see ya. You know that, uh, look at that thing, it looks like a swan. It does. It's a swan. I'm gonna paint the car, Sherbrooke. And yeah, leave Kevo alone. <laughs> okay, I'll get you back, bro. Prepare for thumbnail shot. Sick. Where do you want me then? I'm um, just stand in the engine bay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. So thanks for watching. That was. So thanks for watching another episode of Kevo. Kevo. Uh, thanks for watching another episode of The Skid Factory. I've already said that. Thanks for watching another episode. Thanks for watching another episode of Kevo. 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 Go again. Last one. I got this. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for watching Kevo. Kevo. Episode eleven. We're up to. <laughs> this is taken. I'm done. Why am I? Why am I keep stuffing up?